lot of this red pill, how to get girls stuff, a lot of them are like that as well. They're like the, the peak masculine uh, uh, life is just to have a bunch of women that you barely know. And that, yeah. that's stupid. That's fucking ridiculous, right? Every man, if you want to have a good life, you need to have a good relationship with a good woman. When yeah. you get sick, it's your woman who's going to care, not your boys, right? But you can love her and she can love you with all her heart. You can love each other. You can be prepared to take a bullet for her yeah. and still fuck other bitches. That's what I'm oh, saying. Damn. Alrighty, well, hello, sinners. How are ya? On today's installment of the Letterboard of Truth, our quote of the day is Alpha's beta stop. So I found a guy and he sucks. What's funny is, I know exactly what I'm talking about all of the time. Women ain't got a clue what's good for them. Well, actually, other people found him first, but I never miss an opportunity to dunk on a pompous, misogynistic douchebag. Imagine going through life being such a fucking r The only way you could define yourself by what is what you put in and out of your mouth. If she's only with me because I am tall, strong, rich, and successful, mm -hmm. and smart, and interesting, and charismatic, and only. humble, and funny. Yeah. If she's only with me for those things, and mm -hmm. I'm only with her because she's beautiful and shuts the f up, who's more shallow? You. He also just got arrested for human trafficking, so... He really sucks. More on that later. I don't want to think like you. You're fucking miserable. I'm happy. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, we'll be looking at the personification of those wooden mannequins you drew in our class, AKA Andrew Tate. Not only is Andrew an international kickboxing champion, an entrepreneur, a big baller, if you will, he also runs his own network called The War Room. He brands this exclusive club as the number one way to show men how the world really works for the low, low price of 4,100 pounds. You can also pay Andrew an additional 36 pounds a month to learn how to make that cheddar. The war room is essentially a get rich quick scheme, but the only one getting rich quick is Andrew. Like he thinks he's giving Bilderberg conference, but he's actually giving senior consultant at Herbalife. Listen, Andrew can spin his alpha country club in whatever way he likes, but to me, the war room just seems like the Illuminati for men who take Joker memes way too seriously. All I'm saying is that I wouldn't be surprised if Andrew has a banner of Joaquin Phoenix hanging over his bed. Besides showing off his extravagant lifestyle, Andrew uses his online platforms to teach other men how to live a shallow existence, just like himself. Andrew has a YouTube channel and an Instagram page. However, recently, he has been working on growing his TikTok audience. Cause you know, the one thing we need is this misogynistic old Navy mannequin red pilling the teens of TikTok. But I scrolled through his TikTok page for a bit and to say the least, his content is quite unsettling. Girls come to me and go, yeah, beat it up. I was like, oh yeah, okay, cool. No, I mean it. No, bitch, I mean it. I guarantee I changed the way you look at sex forever. You're gonna be crying. I won't cry. I bet you cry, bitch. I bet you cry. This guy's like a super villain in a comic book. I know I'm alone in my room right now, but I still feel the urge to cover my drink just in case he figures out how to jump through a computer screen. You're saying I, I wouldn't cry. You're challenging me to a fight. You're saying I can't hurt you. You're out of your mind? No, but I think you might be. I don't even have to fuck you. Forget the sex part. That's a distraction. My dick can stay in my pants. I'll just start beating the shit out of you. How about that? We walk in the bedroom. I start kicking your ass. No sex, no sex involved, but you cry then. So just assault, just straight up assault and battery. How does a girl asking you to be rough in the bedroom translate to her challenging you to a fight? I, I, think, we, I think we missed a couple chapters here, Andrew. Like, how do we get to this conclusion? Yeah, this is definitely a sign of a well-adjusted human who should be allowed around the general public. I know everything about myself here in my mind. I have 30 phone numbers memorized. If I need it, it's here. You f and this kid. If you need to escape a hostile country and you need to get the last flight out of Saigon, you can't do it without finding your post. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, gorgeous, gorgeous girls do not know their expiry dates. This man's gonna go full Karen one day and send a strongly worded email to Jansport. Jokes aside though, I do agree that it's important to memorize certain phone numbers and such, just in case you do wind up in an emergency. But golly gee, Andrew, you might be overreacting just a tad, okay? You're at like a 10 right now? Let's, let's bring it down to a three. How about we do that? I don't see the point in having female friends. Any real G out there knows it's true. You got your girl or your girls who you're f***ing. Oh yeah, I'm sure you're slamming mad p with that attitude. You got the girls who you're trying to f And there ain't really room for that chick. Well, I don't want to ever f*** him. I just want to sit here and talk sh and waste his time and, and he can buy me dinner. No, I'm not, I, don't, I don't need female friends. If I tell a girl we're going to f*** and she goes, I don't want to f*** you, I say, okay, well, we don't even going to talk anymore. What the f*** are we going to talk about now? We ain't going to f***. So what are we going to talk about? Vampire diaries? Get the f*** out of here. Are you 13 years old? This is very similar to a clip I reacted to in my Fresh and Fit video. And just like Myron, Andrew views his interactions with women as transactional. If he has nothing to gain from a woman, or in this case, a woman's body, then why should he be asked to show any form of human decency? Andrew has yet to prove that he respects women or at least sees us as something more than wormholes he can stick his dick into. If anything, he looks for an excuse to talk down to women. I don't understand why people who are sad or depressed are so desperate to convince happy people like me that their life and their mindset is correct and okay. No one struggling with mental health issues is gonna sit here and tell you that the way they think is okay, that they choose to live this way because it's correct or whatever. In fact, it's quite the opposite because no one wants to suffer, no one's trying to promote depression, and as someone who actively struggles with depression, we know it sucks. And no one is saying that you should be depressed as well. All right, bro, chill, you're a loser. I agree, you're a loser, son. Convincing me you're a loser is not gonna make you any less of a f loser. The only thing that's gonna make you less of a loser is if you try and sit there and go, you know what, this Tate guy's right. He's got a whole bunch of shit I ain't got. Maybe I should start thinking like him. What a blatant display of someone with no empathy or compassion whatsoever. You're looking down on people who struggle mentally as a result of trauma or a chemical imbalance they have no control over, and then outright admitting that you see these people as less than you because you lack the emotional depth to try and sympathize with them. If depression is crippling you so badly, why are you defending it? Why are you so desperate for depression to be real? Why are you so desperate to convince me it's okay that your mind is fucked? No one's defending it. Talking about your depression doesn't mean you're saying it's okay. God, you are so out of touch with mental health. Why are you trying to change the thoughts of a happy person? I don't want to think like you. You're fucking miserable. I'm happy. You are? Could have fooled me. This is the face of a happy person, everyone. I don't see why I need to have a bottle of water in my primary hand, my number one weapon, and disable myself to walk around with the water for five minutes and then drink it. Drink the water. You're fucking thirsty or not. If you're not thirsty, don't buy the water. If you are thirsty, buy the water and drink the water and dispose of the bottle and get on with your fucking life. Why are you carrying it around? Why have you lumbered yourself? I mean, you can always put the water bottle in your bag to save it. F Wait. Only a bottle of water. No, but no, but it's not just a bottle of water. It's unprofessionalism. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to buy a bottle of water and, and walk around with an extra half a kilo. It's stupid. Speak your fucking truth, man. You better shotgun that Poland Spring. I, I, I swear it's not what it looks like. <coughs> Trauma. Women ain't got a fucking clue what's good for them. But you know who does know what's good for chicks? Their father. Their father. I guarantee there would be less divorce happier families and a better society as a whole if the women could only marry the men their father says they could marry. Back when this was more common, the reason why divorce rates were so low was because there was a bigger stigma around divorce and people tried to avoid that as much as possible. But due to a lack of rights, women were also stuck in these marriages. <laughs> women couldn't have their own bank accounts until the 60s and they couldn't have their own credit cards until 1974. That was barely 50 years ago, which might seem like a long time, but in the grand scheme of things, it really isn't. And with the way things are going in the states we might just be going back to that you're giving women this free choice shit. when is the last time a woman made a good choice to be fair andrew does have a point because i actively decided to watch his shit. 
content. That was a bad choice on my end. I will own up to that. If they make the choice of a good man, they're miserable because they got a p If they make the choice of a G, they're miserable because they got a G. They're just, women are just miserable. Just unhappiness. Seems like you're projecting a bit, my friend. By the time they get a guy that could have been the perfect guy, they're 30 deep, so their head's all messed up. So then even though they got the guy they dreamt, once dreamt of, they can't keep him anymore because they're dreaming of that gangbang they had. Oh, I wish I got gangbanged again. This is boring. Mr. Two Pumps. This is sh We need to bring a range marriage back. You know, maybe some of us aren't dreaming about the perfect guy. Because we're gay. Some of us are raging homosexuals. Proud carpet munchers, even. I guess lesbians mean nothing to you, Andrew. When a king had a son, he wasn't staying at home changing diapers. He was conquering new lands and going to battle for the name, for the bloodline, to set an example for his son to graze into, right? Dad's out here, he's conquered this, he's built this castle, he's out there, he's slayed those people. I'm the next, I gotta go do something. That's what, how a king raises a son, by example. So I guess we're just gonna skip the parts in history where several princes killed their fathers so they could take the throne? It doesn't have to be one or the other, though. You can still accomplish your goals and raise your children. How are you gonna set a good example for your kids if you're not present in their lives, even if it's something small like changing a diaper? Because to me, that sends a stronger message to your family than any battle you conquer. One, two, three. I've seen full-grown adults do this. Now everyone with a brain understands the correct way to count to three is one, two, three. That doesn't mean one. If this doesn't mean one, then this can't be one, two, three. That, that's a logic fail. To be fair, your entire TikTok page is also a logic fail. Also, I don't think there's one right or wrong way to count on your fingers. It really depends on where you live. I actually found an article that says, for example, if you're from the UK or many parts of Europe, you probably start counting with the thumb and finish with the pinky. While in the US, they start counting with the index finger ending with the thumb. In parts of the Middle East like Iran, they begin with the pinky, whereas in Japan, they start with the fingers extended in an open palm, drawing them in to make a closed fist. And this guy is British, so I'm sure he grew up with people who counted exactly like this. What a weird thing to get mad about, I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw a full-grown adult, an adult who was allowed to drive a car and vote and have an opinion, do that. How can you be allowed to have an opinion on the real world or drive an automobile when you go one, two, three, like this? He really said that if you count with your thumb first, you shouldn't be allowed to drive a car. Yet yeah, that's a totally sane and normal take. Like, yeah, people who count like this can vote, but the fact that dudes like this can also vote is f***ing terrifying. Keeps me up at night. Now, if you saw someone go one, two, three, you wouldn't be offended? This doesn't offend you? Look at this. Look at this. This is the same man who vilifies people who open up about their depression. Like, no, you can't talk about your mental health around this guy, but it's totally cool to bitch and moan about how certain people count. Yeah, real alpha of you, dude. The whole point of food, food and water, or food and liquids, are the only things you put in your body. Unless you're a freak and you're sticking things places they shouldn't go. It's me. Uh, I'm the freak. Food and water is all you put in your body, and the idea is that you derive power from it. Look at this power. This, is, this comes from the food I eat. You're telling me you're going to get power from sushi, a little piece of floppy fish, some rice in a circle. What the f is wrong with you? Hey, fellas, is it gay to eat sushi? After all, only the fruitiest of fruits enjoy eating rice in a circle. But wouldn't you think that sushi would be a good source of protein for him to like build muscle or whatever since it's fish? This is the kind of alpha do to preach about how the world is too sensitive, yet he gets triggered over backpacks, water bottles, using your thumb to count. But, and don't even think about bringing sushi around this guy. Andrew's like a vampire, but instead of hanging garlic on your windows, it's just a bunch of California rolls. So when I walk in the room, the reason everyone stares is because they can sense their powers being stolen from them. <laughs> what, does this man think he's Kirby? Dude, the reason why everyone stares at you is because you're a misogynistic creep. I don't even have to do anything. I just, it's just who I am now. I mean, I, this is so un subconscious to me. That is what I do. If you're unhappy, you deserve it because you are not absorbing energy from other individuals. You need to find a way to steal the energy from others. There's only so much energy in the world. You do not have enough of it. 
This man really said that the only way to be happy is by sucking the life out of everyone around you. Just become the most insufferable energy vampire until no one wants to hang out with you anymore. God, he seems like the most exhausting person to be around. Maybe you'll have five close friends in your life that you've known for years and years. People you work together with, people you make money with. If you're sitting there going, I don't have a close friend I make money with, then you're a f***ing idiot. Because what are your friends for if it's not for conquering the world? When me and my friends sit down, we might probably sit down anywhere. All we talk about is how to make more money. This kind of attitude to me is just really sad. Because why do you feel the need to turn every relationship in your life into a business transaction? I think it's good to have people in your life who encourage you to work hard and pursue your dreams, but I find Andrew's outlook on friendship to be very superficial. How are you able to form a meaningful connection with someone if your only focus with them is on making money? Now, I'm sure there are plenty of people who are in business partnerships with friends and still manage to maintain a genuine friendship, but I'm not convinced this guy gains any emotional fulfillment from his life because he's so focused on growing his already exorbitant amount of wealth. So from what we've seen so far, we've established that Andrew is not the nicest person. However, there is an even darker side to Andrew that needs to be brought to light. I'm just going off of what is available to the public. I will make sure to leave my resources in the description so you can see where I got my information from. Regardless, I would like to give a trigger warning for the last bit of this video because it's about to get very dark. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Andrew and his brother Tristan were arrested last month as part of a human trafficking investigation. I'm going to read through an article describing the situation and then I will be discussing the aftermath. So again, if this kind of stuff triggers you, please refrain from watching the rest of the video. The article is titled, Pro-Trump King of Toxic Masculinity Busted in Human Trafficking Probe. Andrew Tate, the prominent pro-Trump personality dubbed by an online admirer, the King of Toxic Masculinity, has been arrested as part of a human trafficking investigation. The former kickboxer's home in Romania was raided after police received reports of an American woman being held there against her will. A Romanian newspaper reported that the police found both the American woman and a Romanian woman in the building during the raid. In 2016, he was booted off the British version of Big Brother over a video of him hitting a woman with a belt. This March, Britain's Daily Mirror tabloid profiled him and his brother Tristan Tate in their Romania-based business, which used webcam models to trick men into sending the brothers tens of thousands of dollars. In one video on his YouTube channel, Andrew Tate said 40% of the reason he moved to Romania was because Romanian police were less likely to pursue SA allegations. Probably 40% of the reason I moved to Romania, because in Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies. If you're going to go to the police and say he me back in 1988, they're going to say we should have done something about it then. If you're going to the police and say he me yesterday, say, okay, have you got physical evidence? All right, is there CCTV proof? Where did it happen? Okay, let's go interview him right now. And if it wasn't really... Oh, that's like, oh, we went to the club, we got drunk, she agreed to go back to my house, we started having sex, and then we carried on having sex, and then we had sex, and she didn't say anything wrong, and then she texted me afterwards, and I didn't text back, and now she's saying, F her. The police would be like, okay, she's an idiot, bye. When people say, why did you in Romania? And I explain my five reasons. One of them is the Me Too era. They go, oh, well, you're a I say, no, I'm not a racist. But I like the idea of being able to just say, to, to do what I want. I like being free. And if you're a man living in England or Germany or America or any of the Western world right now, you've decided to live in a country where any woman, any ex, any bitch who works at Greg's who you bought a pasty from, at some point in the future can destroy your life. This Me Too era bullshit has not protected women. It's just destroyed the safety of men. Regarding the webcam models, Andrew and Tristan run a business where they use webcam models to lure desperate men in to make them believe that they are in a relationship with said models and they have to pay to interact with these models. One customer spent his 20,000 pound inheritance on the website and several other users have also run into debt. In 2019, Tate posed for a picture and shared a meal with far-right cable news commentator Jack Posobiec and InfoWars host Paul Joseph Watkins. Tate has also been a guest multiple times on Alex Jones's InfoWars programs. Shortly after the Harvey Weinstein revelations, Tate tweeted, if you put yourself in a position to be 
you must bear some responsibility. After his arrest, Tate posted a picture on Instagram showing him smoking a cigar in a staged interrogation room as police officers loomed over him. Tate added a caption, Officer, I think we can all agree that love to lie. Since their arrest, the Tate brothers have posted two YouTube videos regarding the investigation on their joint channel called Tate Confidential. It's only discussed in the last two minutes of the first video called Romanian Police Raid Millionaire's Mansion. Their editor compiled a montage of security footage showing the Tate brothers getting arrested accompanied with some royalty-free trap music. I wish that was a joke. <laughs> Then, in the last minute, Andrew complained about how the Romanian police took all of their computers. Oh, that's not working. Oh, the, the police took our computers. Then, in the following video, Fresh Out of Jail, Romania, the Tate brothers and their friend Luke, who I guess was also arrested, sat in their office and talked about how the police suspended their electronics and cash. Then, Tristan made a joke about how Andrew wasn't in the VIP cell regarding the jail cell Andrew was put in following the Rest. Listen, bro, I was in the VIP nah, section. I was in the of, loser section. Of the, of we the were definitely in the VIP section. The three guys continued to make jokes about the investigation and then continued on with the vlog afterwards. Andrew also made a separate video on his personal channel, refuting the claims and explaining his side of the story. According to Andrew, the Romanian officers apologized immediately to the Tate brothers for arresting them because they didn't want to do it in the first place. However, the police still suspended their electronics. So if you're like, oh, the police come in and rough me up because you're a low level peasant. When the police come into my house, they, they wipe their shoes and they apologize. Then the video cut to Andrew sitting in his podcast room where he began to explain what supposedly happened. Allegedly, Tristan was hooking up with this woman who was staying at their mansion, but he slowly started distancing himself from her as he was losing interest. Suddenly, Tristan found out that this same woman is in a relationship and her boyfriend also found out about her and Tristan's affair. So, in order to save face, allegedly, the woman told her boyfriend that she didn't actually want to be there and that the Tate brothers were holding her hostage in their mansion. So now she's in a hard situation, right? Because she doesn't want to admit to her boyfriend she's been cheating with the guy who now ignores her completely. So she says, oh, yeah, I was with him, but I didn't want to be. Uh, I was at their house and I, I couldn't leave. Like she was kidnapped. Even though all of our CCTV, which the police now have, prove that she came by Uber and left by Uber, and there's text messages of her begging to come back, and Tristan wouldn't let her. Her boyfriend believed the story and called the Romanian embassy to report the alleged hostage situation, thus leading to the Tate brothers' arrest. And supposedly, one of the women broke down crying and admitted she made the whole thing up. I'm about to get all my electronics back already, because they know I didn't do anything. The girls broke down crying admitting she made it up. Whoopies. Stupid whoopies. At least from my research, there have been no recent updates. The last bit I just told you was from Andrew's point of view, and for legal and transparency reasons, I wanted to share his side of the story as well. Regardless if the human trafficking claims are true or not, there is still plenty of evidence against Andrew inciting harm on women and encouraging his male following to do and think the same. He is actively influencing thousands of men online to be just as cutthroat, selfish, and apathetic as he is. I find it rather troublesome that a man like Andrew has such a huge audience. I would love to hear what you think about the topic of today's video because given the info I just shared, I'm sure you will have a lot to say. If anything further comes out of this investigation, I will be sure to let you guys know. In the meantime, if there's anything in particular you'd like me to talk about going forward, I have a Google form linked in the description where you could submit your video ideas. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a tiny, tiny, tiny thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching again. I love you guys and I'll see you next time with a brand new video. Bye!